Hi everyone, welcome back to The Novel Nomad and welcome to my like, first October wrap up I've done in a little while. <laughs> so I decided to celebrate what I have read for Victober with the wrap up because when you're still going through a ginormous dickens it feels like you haven't done a lot but when I look back at this video I can be proud of what it did manage to read during Victober. And that was actually quite a lot, so I am proud of myself. Um, so first off, let's go through the shorter list of things that I um, did not get to read uh, during Victober from my allotted TBR, which is Olive by Dinah Craig. Unfortunately, I did not get to this one. And the other one is Mrs. Gaskell's short stories, uh, Cousin Phyllis and other short stories. Um, I just didn't get around to these ones. I was having so much fun with so many other things and I wanted to randomly throw in a new book into my TBA, even though I already had these um, on the pile ready to go. Um, I was just so inspired by so many people having like so many fun reviews and things. So I'm like, maybe I want to read Hardy. <laughs> no, I didn't read that Hardy and nor did I read these books. So they're back on the potential TBR for next year, but I might read it even earlier than that. I definitely want to read Olive earlier than that. I think it's uh, one that's going to be great, especially if Katie from Books and Things loves it. I definitely have to read it. So unfortunately, let's get into the book that I am still currently reading in regards to Victober, and that is David Copperfield. I should have known when I chose this book to put on my TBR that it is huge. And I usually read exclusively one ginormous, nearly like 900 page book per month if I am doing a giant read. Um, so me trying to fit in all the other reads around this, obviously my dedication to David Copperfield suffered because I think reading the physical copy, you see how far you have to go with reading it. And so that kind of puts you off a little bit. Um, but I, I am in the 500s. I am, I think, where am I? No, where? Oh, here it is. 530 pages in. So close. I am so close, but it unfortunately did not happen during the month of October, and I will be away for the month of November. So unfortunately, I don't get to finish it then. But maybe I could do it all around my cloak and dagger reads at Christmas. You never know. I might be able to have time. But we'll see what happens. If you have loved or hated David Copperfield in equal measure or <laughs> in any way have a review of David Copperfield, let me know. I would love, love the inspiration, um, not just to keep going, but to know that there is a finish. <laughs> it just hurts so long. I feel like because I started it on the first day of October, it felt like a very long book. But it wasn't really that long. I'm sure I could have read it in the month if I was only reading David Copperfield. But that aside, I will endeavour to keep going. All right, to a much happier topic, let's go through the books that I did read <laughs> and did manage to finish during Victober. So first off is Willard's Weird by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. I buddy read this with Kate Howe and absolutely loved it. It was so much fun. It almost feels like a noir, like a golden age crime. Um, it is a bit of a crime element. There is a girl that like gets pushed or falls off a train in Cornwall. And it's like one, one of those like closed house mysteries, like who did it? Like who knows? Like who, who was on the train that could have done it and knows who this young girl is? She's a French girl. Like who, why could she be going to like this end of England and not staying in London? So very fun. I definitely recommend if you like Mary Elizabeth Braddon's other work, there is a little touch of sensationalism in it, but otherwise a really nicely paced out novel. It did feel like a golden, no, it did feel like a golden era crime, just a bit longer. Um, but yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it and I always love when I get to buddy read with Kate Howe. I did also manage to finish the Bronte poems. Um, this, this set I was very nervous about taking because I was trying to read it at work and um, I didn't really want to take this beautiful old 1900s kind of like book in to work um, every day and ferry it in and damage it. So thankfully I found a copy of the Bronte poems um, 
and it was only like two dollars so I found that and it had all the same poems so that was my traveling copy and that was my pretty copy <laughs> but it was really handy to find this and it was just like really good to read their poems because so much of their popularity lies in their novels and I think poems are another forms for people to really express um, what they're wanting to say in a really condensed manner or just to express a feeling, not to like write it all down in a character narrative, but to express a feeling that they're having at that time. So yeah, this was really fun. I definitely enjoy poetry and I think it's something that everyone should read more of Victorian poetry because I feel like it gives more of a deeper insight into the writers at the time. Next, I did to console myself in the early days of David Copperfield and I did read Oscar Wilde's collection of short stories. These were surprisingly um, more sad than I remembered. Um, he definitely didn't shy away from consequences. I suppose in those kind of early ideas of fairy tales and short stories, there was a consequence. Uh, these are in the children's ones, so it's like a children's collection in there. But um, even his other short stories, like they're witty and funny, but there was also a bit of a sadness to them, um, which is, you know, I didn't realize at first, but I suppose I was more attuned to it this time when I was reading. But yeah, so amazing. I love the writing, but very sad at the same time. And the last two are the ones, I, these two amazing copies. Uh, so I did manage to reread of the Goblin Market. That was one night when I was feeling very tired and I just wanted to go tread some familiar and beautiful ground that is Christina Rossetti's poetry and then um, one weekend I had a lot of a spare afternoon on my hands and I went through the Rubiat Omar Kayam and um, I just love the illustrations in this edition it is absolutely beautiful but yeah both of these editions are stunning and I think it just has that little bit extra beauty to your reading so yeah they were they were really nice there were some downtime reads once again poetry and I highly recommend um uh, Rubiat Omar Kayam is not really it's not technically written by a Victorian writer but it was translated by the Victorian writer and was hugely popular in the Victorian period so it's kind of like a, another form of mindset it kind of introduces you to um, about what was popular for the Victorians and what kind of literature they were focusing on. So yeah it was otherwise a very successful Victoria if I don't think about the fact that I'm still going through David Copperfield. I still am determined to read it because uh, Barbara Kingsolver's latest book has just come out Demon Copperhead and I definitely want to read that one but I want to read it after I finished David Copperfield and after I watched the Dev Patel adaption of it. I'm very excited, it's all gonna happen, but as soon as I finish the book, that's when it's gonna happen. I hope you had a very successful Victober and I can't wait to see you all next time. Okay, happy reading, bye.